Welcome to JG's Fight Talk, sponsored by Rich's Boxing and Ring Smart. Today with me, Niall Kennedy. How you doing, Niall? Not too bad. How are you? Yeah, all good. Thanks, mate. How's things? How's things over there? Very good. Yeah, we're still in lockdown, so things are a little bit strange and it's different, like coronavirus has been crazy, like it's wiped out so many people and, and, you know, there's a lot of people not taking it too serious, unfortunately, and, you know, it'll probably be, it'll probably stay around a bit longer than it should if everyone came in on board, but yeah. it, it is what it is and we have to work with what we do. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is a bit of a difficult time at the moment, mate, but, you know, it, now we're getting a bit more normality, aren't we, going at the moment with, you know, boxing coming back and you've yeah. got your fight coming up soon. Yeah, um, March 20th. Uh, brilliant. I'm, I'm delighted. Um, Pascal, Pascal pulled out all the stops, to be fair, working with Mark Dunlop and they got me on a, a show in Belgium, an Adam Vanaclair show, I think. His son is, is signed to Murphy's Boxing or boxed with Murphy's Boxing. Okay. There's some connection there anyway, but um, we've linked up and, and luckily I'm, I'm back out March 20th in a six or eight rounder, I'm not sure. So. It'd be good just to get back out there, wouldn't it, mate? Yeah, massively, yeah. I, I've, look, um, I've had two fights in two years, do you know what I mean? So inactivity has hampered me a little bit and look, the first time, the first gap, was probably because of an injury that done me back fairly bad in the Vargas fight, but look, no excuses that time got time has started flying against me and I need to be in the ring. So this was there was an option to hold off to wait for something that would have been probably probably more financially Yeah. I'm not saying financially rewarding because there's at my level there's very little reward but it would have been more financially stable. But Pascal rang me and he said that to me that if we wanted to haul it off and I just said, Pascal, I can't. I, I need to I need to get back in the ring on thirty seven in May. I need to get back in the ring. I need to get that last fight out of my head and I need to start. I want to be fighting. I'd love to have five fights this year. Do you know what I mean? I know that's very hard to say. Like, but no, no. I'm treating I'm treating every fight as my last fight, and I just want to. I really want to go for it and go as hard as I can. At it. Yeah. March is perfect. To go in March. Get, please God, get a good performance. Out again in the summer. Out again early winter, and then out. You know, and this it's just it's about being busy now and, and look. Finishing out on a high, I'm not going to stay around forever, do you know what I mean? I just want to go out, do myself proud. So. Yeah, no, 100%, mate. Have you had to pick up um, any other jobs to to keep going? or? Oh, I, I'm a full-time guard. Jeez, if, I, if I was, if I was, to, I'm a full-time policeman in Ireland. Like if I was, okay. to, if I was to pay, like I have a, I have a wife and a child and, if boxing was to pay for my mortgage and my house <laughs> and my family, I'd be hungry and we'd be homeless. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm very lucky I have a full time job. It's hard, all right. That makes boxing probably harder, but I, at least I have at least I have my mortgage covered. At least I have food on the table for my family. Yeah, so. yeah definitely. Yeah. So when did when did boxing start for you then? Because obviously, being a policeman, it must be as you say very busy. Um, when did boxing sort of come into your life? Um, the short version would be 2015. I decided to give it full whack, but I started boxing at seven. I've been at it since I was a baby, so I'm um, in Gory Boxing Club and boxed in Gory Boxing Club all the way up. I gave up at 16. I took a beating off Andy Lee in an All Ireland Junior semi final, and uh, I said, Right, that's enough. I went off drinking and looking for young ones as a 16 year old does and um, then my best friend Darren O'Toole uh, he's now chairman of Gory Boxing Club he said to me uh, 
I think the guy I joined the guards when I was twenty, and I got back into boxing. They had a guard of boxing team, and I was training with my best mate. He was doing pads for me, and he just said you should give this another go. So yeah. I went back amateur then, and I had a reasonable success and won an intermediate title straight away, and got to two senior finals, three, four semi finals. You know, I was. The nearly man for about five years on, on the high performance scene. And so then 2015, when I realized Rio wasn't going to happen, uh, when I'd lost to Dean Gardner, I just said, right, I either pack it in now or I give professional boxing a go. And me and Pascal had been, wouldn't say working together, but he we struck up a bond. I was up there sparring a little bit. And, very honest, Pascal is very, very honest. And I sent him a message and I just said to him, uh, would you be interested in me coming on board? And he said, no, you give me give me four or five days. He said, I'd love to have you on board, but I won't like it. There's no point wasting your time. We'll see if there's anyone interested in, in looking at you. So he has a good connection with Ken Casey through Spike and Ken came on board he's brought me out for three fights i think and just sort of not, not trials but having a look at me and then yeah after the i won in march march 16 or 17 i won the massachusetts title and my best jesse barbosa and after that then he was looking a little bit more serious and then we got an off Offer of a biggish fight against Alexis Santos in September headline show for Louis de Bella. And uh, yeah, I, I bet Santos. And he was, at the time, he was IBO world champion and um, our international champion, one of them as well. Like it was a bit of a shock. Well, it was a massive shock, but it wasn't us. So um, yeah, so that was it then. So I got signed to Murphy's Boxing and I've been lucky that. They've looked after me up until now. And my career sort of took little troughs. Then, and, you know, you have peaks and troughs. And yeah. I had a bad draw. Well, I thought I won the fight against Joe Caudle, but I got a draw. And then I thought I won the fight actually comfortably enough, five rounds to three at worst, I thought. And then um, had the Devin Vargas fight. And yeah, what happened then was was got injured, and yeah. then that fight didn't go my way. And no excuses, injury aside, no excuses. Devin Vargas, very wily, cagey character. I, I I should have stopped him, but I should have stopped him in the third round, even after the injury. But I just hadn't got the I hadn't got the power in my body to, to put the foot on the pedal really and then um, and then there's another there was a big big break then till last year till I fought um, Alan Babbage so yeah look these things happen what well, doesn't kill you makes you stronger and then um, we we'll come back and, and, and this this is the reason why I've took this fight because it gets me back in the ring sooner yeah yeah do you, do you find do you find that um, a lot of a lot of pro box as well, or amateur level as well? Do you think they take a draw as hard as a loss sometimes? Yeah, definitely. Well, I struggled with that draw for two reasons, I suppose. I was a little annoyed at the fact that I was the home, well, not the home fighter, but I was the Murphy's boxing fighter, and it was their show, and I felt I won a five rounds to three. It was a poor performance, but. I still felt I won, won the fight and didn't go my way. Um, but yeah, I was frustrated. But listen, I was more frustrated with myself. Um, don't, like, yeah, I, it is what it is. It was a learning curve. Yeah. So look, what, look, yeah. looking at the, um, the heavyweight division at the moment, because there's obviously, it seems to be the division to be in, doesn't it? Like, yeah, it's exciting fight, again. Yeah. For fights sort of, Top to bottom, really, you know, yeah. heavyweight. It's probably the most exciting division to be in. 
because yeah. it's that, you know, as people say, it's that one punch can change everything, which, yeah, it always has done, hasn't it? Yeah, yes, Randy Ruiz proved that. And, cool, yeah. You know, and, and look, Deontay Wilder was, was top of the pile there for so long because of that one punch. And there's nothing to say he won't come back to the top as well. Like, you know, he's I think he's supposed to fight Charles Martin, so. Yeah, who, who, do you think, who do you think, um, when you look at the rest of the heavyweight division, who do you think sort of in that top sort of three? Who's, who's that top three that people need to? Oh, it, it's, I think it's simple, to be honest with you. Your top three, well, your third one is probably not that simple. Um, but <laughs> Tyson, Tyson and Anthony are definitely top three, you know. And... Whichever day you get me, I'd say one is top and the other is second, or vice versa. I, I, I think that fight's going to be intriguing. Like you know, I think. How do you prefer uh, prepare for Tyson Fury? He's I don't know if he knows what he's going to do, and yeah, you know, yeah. he, he's brilliant. He can box as good southpaw as he can orthodox, and he's a class act. And if you're to beat that style. I think technically you have to be technically sound, very straight, robust fighter, similar yeah. to Klitschko. And I think, I think Anthony Joshua is that. So with with far more power. So yeah. Who wins now? Who wins? I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. <laughs> Listen, come here. I I think um. I I don't think it'll be a one fight job. I think we'll have two of them as well. And yeah, I don't yeah. Think I don't think I don't think Tyson can knock out Anthony, but I think yeah. he could make it very difficult boxing wise. But Anthony could knock out Tyson. Do you know what I mean? And but look, I so who are you picking? Who are you picking? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very, look. I I'm very fond of I'm very fond of what Tyson Fury has done for mental health. And yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and and I've met. Anthony Joshua, and I can honestly hand on heart say that he is one of the kindest men and best men I've ever met in boxing and his team. Yeah. Very good people, do you know what I mean? So it's it's a hard fight for me to pick because Andy Lee, I think, is a top class fella, and Andy is in is in uh, Tyson's corner now as well. So I'd be sitting on the fence completely. <laughs> I thought I could shift you, mate, and I think uh, you're, the, you're the only person. I was weary, I was today. going back and forth. You're the only person I've interviewed today who won't give an answer. Honestly. No, no. no genuinely I won't, honestly. Because, and it's, it's not, I, I can't give you an answer because I don't know. I genuinely, I, I changed my mind all the time. But I think it's the most intriguing fight out there. It's like styles, like their, their styles are so different. And, and then... I, I'm a massive mental health advocate at home and, and what Tyson has done is fantastic and you know I wish him the very best to look with it. and it's great to see him smiling and him happy yeah, yeah. Oh, in his videos it's great to see his wife happy and his kids happy you know that's as important and then I honestly honestly when I say this like I mean, Joshua is one of the nicest humans you'd ever meet like honestly lovely so uh, obviously, hats off to you, mate. You've you've kind of summed it up with, without without picking someone. You've summed both of them up because they are both like that. You know, they're you know when when grassroots was struggling, you know, Anthony put his hand in his pocket and he didn't need to, but but that's you know he that's where he came from. He recognises that yeah. you know that's 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 the the foundation of the sport, isn't it? And that's yeah. where, you know. The money needs to go in order to push the sport upwards. You know, yeah, yeah. they're the people brilliant. fighting, aren't they? Like yourself, to to put them the food on the table and yeah. you know that sort of thing. So, yeah, hats off to both of them. And as you say, with Tyson with the mental health thing, um, you know what an advocate. You know, yeah. he's been there, done it, lived through it, and still struggling yeah. with it now. And um, come out the other side, and it's great to see. And he's very honest in his interviews. That he, he look, come here. I, I'm bipolar, and I I'd be very honest in the sense that like I'm I'm very well, I'm very happy, I'm very safe. But every like that's not every day. 
Do you know what I mean? But yeah. at least now I have the skills and the tools to cope with that, like Tyson has now. And do you know what so, and, and fair play to him for talking about it, like, do you know, and he was so vocal yeah. about it. So fair play to him. No, I, yeah, completely agree with you. Know, it's, and it's a big topic at the moment, isn't it? Especially with lockdown as well and that sort of yeah. thing. You know, it's a it's a major topic. But um, yeah, I had I had someone ask me today if if you had to sort of uh, you know looking back at history with in regards to the boxing, is there a standout fight for you that you can say to people like if if you had to get people to um, to say right, this is boxing. And you mm. had to pick a fight for people to watch. Is there a particular fight that you turn to or a couple of fights? Steve Collins and Chris Rubank obviously is a massive one. And yeah, yeah. I'm Irish and it was huge. Like I remember that as a kid happening. And I tell you, someone that I like you can go back, I don't remember him happening, but some of Ali fights were unbelievable as well. And but Wayne McCullough, I was a massive fan of Wayne McCullough and I loved watching him fight. And then, like, Mickey Ward and the Arturo Gatti fights, you know, they're, like, there's so many great examples. And, and yeah. if you're, like, I, I'm i I'm a heavyweight boxer and I, I'd love to say I just love knockouts and power punching, but, like, I, I, as much as he's probably not the best role model in the world, Floyd Mayweather or re rock boxing, really, didn't he? So. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah, can't yeah. argue with it, like he was class. So. The not get hit and hit, you know, yeah. attitude was unbelievable, wasn't it? You know, yeah. there's not many people that could, you know, well, I don't think there's anyone really that matches that sort of style. No, no, really. no, I can't think so. I think it's been proven, like, if you look at who he beat, yeah. it's been pro- proven. Like, I know, look, maybe near the end of a smart matchmaking and stuff, but. Still a class act. You can't argue with anything he done. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he'll ever come back? I wouldn't rule it. I wouldn't say he'll ever fight properly again, but he'll do these exhibitions and clock up loads of money. Why wouldn't he? Sure, YouTubers are doing it now. So. Yeah, yeah. He needs, you know, an extra 50 million, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, needs a, he needs an extra 50 million. Like, I need a new jar of coffee, I think. That's the <laughs> yeah. No, mate, we're, all, we're all we're all with you, mate. We're all with you. Don't worry about it. Ah, he's class. He, he probably did rewrite boxing in the skill, like, you know. It, yeah, it's just a class act. Yeah. So if you t- if you take, um, say, you know, Joshua and Fury are almost coming to the end of their careers now. If you you know, mm. in a way, aren't they? There. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Um, what age is Tyson? And he's only thirty-two, is he? Yeah, I just wonder if they're going to, is this going to be the two-fight deal that kind of seals it for one of them to turn around and go, yep, yeah, I've done it. No, maybe, yeah, maybe they'll turn around and have an off done and drift off to the sun. But look, the two of them, like I think Tyson has proved he doesn't physically have to be in the best shape in the world to perform. And like, there's nothing to stop him boxing until he was 40. And Anthony is meticulous in his preparation. Like I couldn't believe it. How how like even his stretching down to his stretching, he, put, he takes everything so serious, you know. So they, I can't say when it'll be. They, they will say when it'll be them, but it might be a case that after this, after this fight or whatever, how many how many fights to get out? But they could turn around and say themselves, "What's left for them?" You know. So. Yeah. Who, who, who do you think is going to take over the British flag, as it were? Is do you think? Can you do you know of any lads that are sort of coming up that you kind of think they could be the next sort of Joshua Fury? Oh, Joe Joyce is doing brilliant, and yeah. I think come here and I tell you, he, he's he's a fantastic chance of beating um, of beating Usyk. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, just with that relentless pressure style walking him down. Yeah, and he's a big uh, lad, isn't he? Big lad. Massive man, yeah. Big, big clever fella as well. Like, you know, he, he, 
uh, chin chin of granite, like you could hit him with a hurl and it wouldn't bother him. Do you know what I mean? A decent, tough, strong man. Um, there's a young lad in Sam Jones that's stable as well, uh, Johnny Fisher, who's a bowl he made. Yeah, his Johnny, yeah. yeah, I spoke to Johnny the other week. Top lad, top lad. Yeah, good, good fella. I, and, so I never sparred with him, but I watched him spar and He's a like he is the Ramford bull. He's just a bull, like you know. He, he needs a tiny bit of fine tuning, but he has yeah, yeah. He has all the tools to do. Look, and I wish him the best of luck because he is from like his dad and like they're really good people, funny people as well. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And you, you know, think you've got Mark Tibbs, isn't he, in his corner? Yeah. A hell of a trainer. Hell of a trainer. Now he has sparring with Daniel Dubois there as well, like you know, and, and Daniel is. Top class, like I know Joe Ben and whatever, but like he's a top, top class talent, and and that was a shock. Like I couldn't understand how people thought Daniel the would be George Ice. To be honest, it was surprised me. I won a nice few pound on it. To be honest, I just didn't think Daniel the had the experience for George Ice. And um, oh yeah, Daniel the will come back, and him and Johnny will definitely bring each other on. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, both, they're both massive powerhouses and um, Johnny probably with Mark Tibbs I know Mark I, I've met Mark once uh, years ago he worked with Frank Ugliani so I got to know him a little bit through that and you know he was he was the I won a Frank's fight because Packy trained Frank and like Frank spoke very well of him and, and they're very astute boxing men and, and we see Billy Joe is back with him like so the teams is uh, Jimmy and Mark, like best of luck to them and, and they'll be great stable. So I'm sure they will guide Johnny in the right direction and yeah. Daniel and Daniel as well, like you know. So um yeah, it's it's exciting and who else then in England we we've a new a new uh well possibly I, I don't know if he has turn pro yet, but young Thomas Carty in Ireland is over sparring he was sparring with Derek Chisora and he was sparring with a couple of lads. He's a very exciting, big puncher, very stylish southpaw, nice lad as well, and very marked with a lot more handsome than me. And he's, he's a good <laughs> fella, like so. Um, but yeah, there's loads like boxing, boxing is thriving, and like what you said, heavyweight boxing is thriving, so it's brilliant, it's exciting. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's definitely the um, for me, the way to watch. Uh, you know, it, it's it's um, there's some really great youngsters, and I think you know, you know, Britain and Ireland are really sort of pushing the fighters through now, and I think we we seem to be the place to be. You know, yeah, well, at the moment, definitely. But I think, look, I think Matchroom and and BT, well, Frank Warren, like they have the money to run these shows, and that's what it's all about. So they're getting the fighters out. Mm. Georgian in England needs to probably be looked at a little bit better. All right, it has just been some pretty bad decisions. Uh, but look, that people, I, I, I love the way people rant on Twitter about Georgian decisions. But if you go and watch kids fighting, two 11 year olds fighting in a county championships and an amateur championships, and you see an 11 year old getting robbed. You know what I mean? It, it's happening from grassroots. So yes. how how do they expect it to stop at the highest levels? We, and then and then the we other side the reputation, do we? We don't want the same reputation as the states sort of got. Yeah. Um, because that's where it was happening, wasn't it? If if a British fighter went over to America and fought, you know, and it went twelve rounds, mm. it generally went in the home fighter. And, and we yeah. don't want to end up being like that, do we? No, and, and to be fair, it generally doesn't, but there has been some questionable... Cool. Like, the last couple of weeks. Uh, like Kiko Martinez. Yeah. That fight very, very, very <laughs> yeah. good. That was no, really like, cool. like crazy. And Zelfa Barrett's a very good fighter, um, but Kiko just didn't let him get into his rhythm at all and yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a bad decision. Yeah. No, sadly, they're creeping in, but hopefully over the next couple of weeks, because, you know, it's all happening, isn't it? So, you know, hopefully we'll start to see some better results and stuff happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. 
But um, yeah, thanks for coming on, though. I really appreciate no, the time. No problem at all. Can I just throw I may throw because genuinely, like I said, yeah, before we went on, um, this fight, this fight in Be- Belgium. Yeah, Belgium. Um <laughs> You make sure you get on the right plane, mate. I'll tell you. <laughs> nah, Packy, Packy will make sure that. But um I, this fight wouldn't be possible for me without sponsors. And even at that it's it's a, a push, but I, I have to thank a couple of sponsors, if you don't mind, there oh, really mate. quickly. Go for it, honestly. Just uh, a couple that have been with me from the start there, Joe DeVito from Palace Casino and Arthur Victor, he's been amazing to me. Body Bro, um, the Dinky Diner in Courtown, Conan Thomas is a good friend, and Wizzy Internet, and Bolins of Gory, uh, it's a furniture store as well. Like, so these have been massive because genuinely, um, I yeah, losing money is one thing on a fight. You don't want to lose too much, do you know what I mean? So these are are softening the burden a little bit on that. And then Ken Casey from Murphy's Boxing has, you know, that they're struggling as well because for any Murphy's Boxing shows they have to sell tickets. So he he support me in this fight as well in the sense that he he financially has helped me out a little bit as well. So. And then I just want, because of lockdown and you're in the same situation, all the gyms are closed. But I've been very lucky that Gory Boxing Club, my amateur club, have let me have a key. And well, they always do, but especially now they've given me permission to train, which has been unbelievable because yeah. without that, I'd, I'd, you know, just to go down and get my bag work in and get my body work in and stuff like that. So. I'm indebted to him. I'm, I'm indebted to him for everything. Any of that, that saved me life years ago, but just give me the key at this moment in time, especially when everyone is struggling. It's been a massive help. And then just the boss man, Packy. Um, hey, yeah, I, mean, I, I have to thank him because he pulled the head off me if I don't. But um, no, Packy has been brilliant. He, he, he knew I needed to fight. So he pushed this one through and yeah. uh, it's been good to me. And then, by that, then uh, the little man that I put to bed that uh, has you so late doing this and my wife as well, like me. So I'm just blessed with my family. And yeah. honestly, I have everything perfect outside the boxing that I should be able to perform in the ring. Do you know what I mean? And, and yeah. I need to, I, I, I'm going to bury some demons come March the 20th against whoever the man is and it's in Belgium so um, <laughs> yeah so I, I love it all, but, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah whoever the man is and whatever it is this is my opportunity to to right the wrongs a little bit and yeah you know there's an old saying in hard work we trust and, and I work very hard and yeah it'll it'll hopefully come to fruition on the night well I have to say no you're one of the most gracious guys I've met so far, and I genuinely mean that. And um, thanks, man. I, I I genuinely wish you all the best, and you know, f- for you and your family, and you know, you've got a good team behind you. You know, the the fact that your sponsors have stood by you sort of shows how much of a gent you really are. So yeah, I don't know. I'm begging. Maybe I'm begging well or something. Like no, not at all, mate. Honestly, it, it just shows what sort of a bloke you are. So I'll, I'll take my hat off to you, and um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll be thinking of you that day when you're fighting, and um, okay. yeah, I wish you all the best, mate. You're a gent. Thanks a million. I appreciate you getting in contact as well. Thanks very much for this. Yeah, no problems it's, at all, mate. It's great. it's great to be able to thank the lads on this on some public as well. So. All right, boy. Genuinely, thanks for reaching out. Uh, no problem at all. And you take care, all right? All right. God bless you. Yeah, and you. God bless. Well, that's Happy. my... That Cheers, my... God. You're a gent. Thanks a million, man. Uh, no problem. You take care. All right. God bless. Thank you. Well, that was Niall Kennedy. What an absolute gent. Um, real privilege to meet him. Um, couldn't find a, a kinder soul, really. Um, the fact that he's... 
just wanted to put it out there for his sponsors and he's giving it all for his family and all the rest of it. A real, real top bloke and wish him all the best for his fight. Um, yeah, you've another episode of JG's Fight Talk. And uh, yeah, yeah, take care. Thank you.